Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk .com. I'm out, what? Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Uh, Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. We got a great show lined up for you tonight. A lot going on in the world of sports. You got a blockbuster trade in the NBA. We have a historic fight coming up this Saturday. Before we get into all that, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Trip Young. What's going on, Trip? What's going on, man? I'm, I'm enjoying this uh, baseball uh, today. We had a little brawl. Reminded <laughs> me of the, the 90s Knicks, the way the Yankees went at it with the Tigers today. Um, but uh, we're going to get into that in a minute. Legend in two games, Eric Sanchez. What's going on? It's happy to be here, man. There's a lot to talk about. Thursday's always great. Yeah, man. Whole lot. Okay. What we got going on, Stat Man? What's, what's on the agenda? Start with the big trade, you had uh, Kyrie Irvin, who made it known that he wanted to leave Cleveland. He worked out a deal with the Eastern Conference rival, Boston Celtics. I personally feel the Celtics gave up a little too much for that. Uh, you got Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, uh, the rookie Zizic, and uh, the mm -hmm. 2018 Nets draft pick, which is. Most likely, you know, kind of safe to say it's going to be a lottery pick and could be top top three. Yeah. Uh, Unless so, D'Angelo Russell is the MVP, and we know that's I'm, not going to happen. We'll put so. it to you this way. The, the bottom five now, you know, the four, <laughs> the best five players on the bench of, of the Cavaliers are probably better than the starting lineup of the Brooklyn Nets. Oh, that's a little harsh. I mean, the Nets, you, let's look at Nets it. Nets have D'Angelo now. They do got Jeremy Lewis. And they got Alan Crabb. Oh, you know, they got a couple you, guards, you got, but their team Rose, is bad, though. You got, you yeah. got uh, you know, Shumpert, Corver, Jay Crowder. So don't, don't ever disrespect Trips, Shannon man. Dan Woody. Yeah, that's you true. Know, don't disrespect Dan Woody. Woody. Come, Woody on, is. come on, Stat Man. You know Dan that. Woody is a problem. I'm telling you. That's gonna be he's gonna be the, the the most improved player this year, and the Nets is gonna be in in seventh place. In the that's Eastern enough Conference. Nets talk. Yeah, that's way too much Nets First talk of for the all, night. Uh, Isaiah Thomas and the pick, in my opinion, is more than enough. I think without the pick, it's a pretty decent trade with Isaiah Thomas, Crowder, and Zizic as well, it is, uh, and then they throw in the pick on top of it. Like I mean, I, you're talking about twenty five versus what twenty twenty eight twenty nine. Um, and you know that he's coming up on that big two hundred million dollar payday, which they weren't trying to trying to pay anyway. Yeah. But I mean, Kyrie is a gold medalist, NBA champion, and he's twenty five. You know, Isaiah Thomas is a lot younger, and Crowder is a great perimeter defender, but he's not that good offensively. You know what I'm saying? So he definitely helps the helps the Cavs out. But I mean, that first round pick is really what steals the deal because they're looking to build towards the future. Now, I, I think uh, Celtics win this trade all the way around. They get the better player of, of the four that were exchanged, right? Kyrie's head and shoulders better than yeah, the other no guys, question right? About that. He's younger than everybody else involved in the deal. He's 25, Isaiah's 29. He's also signed for another two years with the third year as an option, right? Whereas Isaiah has to get re up next summer. We talked about this on the show about a month ago. Who's paying Isaiah the max money at 30 years old when he's an undersized guard? So now the, the responsibility falls on the Cavs. I think the Celtics went out. They were looking to get rid of Isaiah anyway. They basically flip Isaiah and the pick, as you mentioned, for Kyrie because Crowder didn't fit anymore anyway. With Haywood, with Tatum, and with Brown, where was Crowder going to play? 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's why I understand them getting rid of Crowder, but I think the pick just puts it a little bit over the top as far as giving up too much. But at the same time, from Danny Ainge's perspective, you have a chance to get Kyrie Irving. There's no question that yeah. the roster is better overall this year for the Celtics. So the, it makes kind of sense on both sides, and I, I think the pick was a little too much because it's going to be you know, a top three pick next year. So. It, it could be. Um, Most and I, likely, but I, I mean, at the same time, you you don't you yeah. don't know whether the pick is going to pan yeah. out or not. So that's that's yeah. a gamble that you take. But the Celtics the are trying to win now, and Kyrie Irving gives them a much better chance of winning this year than uh, you know what the draft pick will do for them in the future. Because Kyrie is you know by far the best player on the court. I mean, they got yeah. Gordon Hayward. Uh, and Isaiah Thomas there now. It's clear that Kyrie's the alpha dog over mm -hmm. there. And, and he Boston, wanted. he's clutch. Obviously, you see him went making the game-winning shot uh, in the finals. So it's uh, he's definitely clutch as well. So that, that gives him... That gives them more of a chance of being a contender in the Eastern Conference. But for the future, I think that a, a, a top three pick is is definitely uh, you know putting it a little over the top. Yeah, so the Celtics have kind of win. But the Celtics still have so many picks over the next couple drafts. They still have two first round picks next yeah, year. Yeah, they still have the Lakers so, pick. Yeah, it's going to be a high draft pick. And 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 to say the Nets pick, I, I agree. I believe it's going to be a top five pick. But the Nets have no incentive to tank, so the Nets are going to try to win this year because yeah. the Nets don't have that pick. So it's not a situation where it's like, oh, the Nets are just going to tank it away and that's automatically going to be a number one pick. Yeah, exactly. The Nets pick. are spending money this Even summer. Even if they try to win, they don't, you know. Yeah. I mean, they're a little bit better than last year. But, but all right, so realistically. It might not well, you be know top, what, I see your point. It might not be top three. Yeah, it, it might and we be think a lot of top teams, five, top Yeah, top the East got worse this year because, you know, Paul George left. Yeah. Jimmy Butler left the Bulls, so it's going to be a little shift in the East Bulls anyway. definitely so. looking to tank, too. So. Yeah, and it. There's still a lot of other teams that are very bad. I mean, Atlanta's yeah. still a bad team. Yeah. Sacramento's a bad team. Yeah. You know, the Knicks are going to be a lottery team again. So there are other teams that are going to be right Wait in that minute. mix. You don't know what the Knicks <laughs> Uh, I know what the Knicks are going to be. Yeah, I've been watching the Knicks long enough to know Dwayne what they're going to be. Maybe goes to the Knicks instead. Uh, of let's, let's just quit while we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I one. think that's <laughs> enough Knicks talk as well for the night because we know we're not better than, than a, a sixth yeah, or seventh lottery pick. That, that, that's, we're right that's in the same position we went last year. Yeah. You well, know that's well, that. Yeah, Phil Jackson, maybe the, the, the fact now. that they – Finally, get rid of the triangle. Hornacek can coach the way he wants to coach. Maybe they do something. Yeah, I mean, because we're going to be running offense through Tim Hardaway Jr. now and yeah. Frankie so. Nicotine. And so, yeah, of course, Frankie it makes perfect Frank? sense. Yeah, yeah French Frank well. is going to make perfect sense now. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, listen, it's the Knicks, man. We don't expect too much from them. So People didn't expect you know. that much out of Porzingis. I mean, one thing Phil Jackson knows yeah, that's one play is play play the drop. I'm just saying, Frenchie Frank, we don't know what to expect out of him. He could be the truth. It's still a bad <laughs> yeah. team. But well, he's still a rookie. He's not coming in and having an MVP I'm more season. saying it for joking purposes. Yeah, I don't actually believe that the Knicks are going to make noise next no. year. But I mean, I, again, the, the Cavs did get deeper, and it's it's a it's good moves. The players that they got back, they're solid players for their rotation. Yeah. You know, and you throw that in with Derrick Rose as the backup point guard now, and if they can add D Wade, or maybe they even flip that first round pick to bring in another guy. Yeah, you know, which is still a possibility. They could flip that and bring in another yeah. athlete. We, we have a, a fan mail question, speaking of which. Keith from Brooklyn writes, if you were the Cavs, would you trade the Nets pick for Melo? I don't think they can do that because they don't have the cap space. But if they could, why would well, they could just match up the contracts? Yeah, they would have to throw they in a player have to throw with in the first round. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um, but, I mean, that depends on what, you know, what player you're including if the, you know. It would have to be love. If Really. Yeah, it would have to be love and shump, either love but and shump. At the same love time, love and the draft pick would that make sense to you? I, I think Melo still makes a, a little bit more, so it have to be no. I'm, I'm, else. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, as far as would that make sense to you? You're a Cavs fan. Would I wouldn't. You want, I don't think I would give up love in the draft pick. Yeah, I think that's I too think, much. Yeah. I think you would have to. I mean, I, I don't see love and Melo can't be on the floor together. So if you keep them both, let's say even if you you combine Tristan Thompson. Shumpert in the first round pick to make the salaries match and then throw in the first round pick. So maybe they work out some kind of a three team trade then because. I mean, you I might have to think. The Rockets went stagnant, by the way. Yeah, so to bring Melo in, you got to get rid of. Love is going to have to be a piece that goes. Now, he may not come directly to the Knicks, but he's going to have to be a guy you move because yeah. what would your starting five be? LeBron starting at the five with Love at the four and Melo at the three? 
Like, well, how would that work? Tristan Thompson. And, you he, know, he had to, yeah, someone had to come up to Mel- bench, Melo would play That's the what I'm four saying. or the three, and LeBron would play the four or the three. And so where does Love start, start then? Yeah, that's love. Well, love can love only play the to, four. That's what I'm saying. to the five. I mean, he could play so the five. It's, either way, it's still yeah, the same three guys I just mentioned. Yeah, it's, you're just well, determining yeah. who starts I mean, at center, Tristan, who starts. Tristan would have to come off the bench. Love would play uh, the center position. Melo at the four. LeBron at the three. No, but he's saying we have to trade either Tristan you're gonna, or Love. You're gonna well, have to trade one of those. Because I mean, Tristan can go. I mean, he's you know he's oh, still I'm, dealing I'm, with the Kardashians. I understand that, but I still you still can't play Melo and Love together. That would be a match. If they played the Warriors again, which we expect them yeah, to, we're they're saying they're the, the favorites. And that Warriors would be a matchup nightmare on the to court. say, all right, Melo, who you're going to guard? And then whoever you can't guard, Love is going to have somebody else he can't guard either. So now yeah. we've got two defensive liabilities on the floor so that's what for 30 minutes a night. That's they're going to have to facilitate a three-team game. Yeah, Love is going to have to be involved in any deal to get out of there. I, mean, I know they were talking to Denver earlier. Maybe they can get somebody from Denver, one of them young kids, uh, Jamal Murray from Denver. They're, Nah, I don't think they'll get Jamal Murray now because he, he wouldn't really fit either with, with Isaiah and then Derrick Rose. Yeah, Derrick Rose. But, so, but I maybe mean, you get Wilson Chandler. Maybe you get some perimeter defenders from them. Oh, they, LeBron they could go wants get, the, 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 the banana boat four. So what about yeah. Love and the draft pick to the Rockets for uh, for Chris Paul? But they already uh, they got can't, Isaiah Thomas. They and, can't trade Chris and, Paul at yeah, this point. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so they wouldn't even be able to do and that. I, well, yeah, you probably have to... Involve Isaiah. But that's what I'm saying. I don't think you can move them at this point because Paul's already Isaiah been involved in one yeah. deal. So you can't move Paul again, I don't think. I think you would have to wait. If there's a certain amount of time you got to yeah, wait before you can try to move. As a free agent? Like, no, October, it was a sign and trade. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, because it was a sign and trade, there's a certain amount of time that has to go by before you can try to move him was again. It's 60 days on 2K? <laughs> yeah, on 2K rules. Yeah, yeah 2K, 60 he got days. about 60 days before he could. Just simulate those 60 again. days and then make a move. But Nah, I think. Melo, I th- it could happen for Melo. They've got to find a third team unless they're willing to just do love in the first round for Melo straight up. I mean, unless Wade comes to the Knicks and then LeBron signs with the Knicks next year, then you got three. Well, we're still talking of, about this season. We, we, yeah, we're we, talking we, about this season. <laughs> but I, I did, season, yeah. Tripp and I were, you know, off camera, we had the conversation. I think it's a little stronger possibility now that LeBron may entertain coming to New York next summer. Yeah, I mean they, did, you know, Blake Griffin had his comments, and LeBron just yeah, said right he is. had no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, but right, he, right. he could see him playing for the Knicks more so than the Lakers next season, but that doesn't I mean, really mean. Melo still is, is going to have another another year left on his contract, so it's well, Melo's possible. yeah, Melo will have the year, and everybody the, else is up. The East yeah, is obviously the weaker conference, so it's the easier path. Yeah, and it would almost be like the fu to Kyrie, like all right, so now I'm going to go to New York with Przingis. Where you wanted to go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where you wanted to go, exactly. and I'll be, I'll still be that roadblock that's going to stop you from getting to that yeah, next so level. You still won't make it to the finals because yeah. it's going to be me, Melo. Yeah, it'll be me, Melo. Yeah, Przingis, and then and, like said, Przingis. and then possibly like a, a Dwayne Wade there. Yeah. Where it's like, all right, so we're good now. Where you wanted to go, I'm, I'm going there, and I'm yeah. going to be that roadblock that stops yeah, that you from be, going. That would be messed up, <laughs> messed up for Kyrie, especially because he really wanted to go to the Knicks. Like, yeah. I know he was not trying to go to the Celtics. He's from the New York area. I'm sure he grew up a, a, a Knicks fan. His father's from the Bronx, so I'm pretty yeah. sure he grew up a Knicks fan in that. So to have to go play for the Celtics, I know he's, he's probably saying a little bit. Like, I'm sure he'll be all right because he'll still be good, but I know he would prefer to, to go to New York and play for the Knicks. Oh, absolutely. Isaiah didn't necessarily want out of Boston, but yet the fans still burning his jersey. Stupid. LeBron, yeah. you know, talked about how stupid that was, and you know he was traded. What don't you understand? It's yeah, not like, like I can understand, you know, the LeBron, LeBron or Durant yeah. jerseys when they left, or you even know. Kyrie's jersey. Yeah, in this because he wanted he, to leave. He wanted to leave, but, but Isaiah Thomas got traded, and he played right after his sister died for y'all. Yeah. Like that's. Come I, on. I, I think it's more, uh, you know, the publicity thing to get the to go viral because yeah, you know, LeBron get that, talked get about it, so yeah, then ESPN stupid. talked about it, so. You get a lot of views on the video, and you get your yeah. five minutes of fame. So I, I think that I don't think the people that burned the jersey just, are really mad at him. No, nah, they just wanted to, wanted to burn his jersey, <laughs> like because that really didn't make no sense. He's not like he wanted to leave. So, but you know that's 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 the, that's those uh, Boston fans, you know. So, so Kyrie's <laughs> number is changing, and his jersey is changing, but he's on the cover of Two K. With the uh, well, with the Cavs, they'll, they'll do a, they got yeah, they got time to, yeah. Yeah. That, to, to fix them. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure yeah. they mass produced the uh, the covers. And, <laughs> yeah, it's, and, I mean, they'll they'll go back. it's just the paper. Yeah, they'll, they'll go they'll back go and switch the paper yeah. out. Like that's that's fine. 
Uh, you think they're really going to do that? I mean, the release isn't that long from now. Release is uh, three weeks from now, I think. I yeah. highly doubt they're going to let them come out with a Cavs jersey. Yeah, uh, that, that, I mean, that would be crazy if, if they I would just think let that it go. They, they leave it as is because I think everything's printed. The, the cost the of... The is supposed to come out at the end of September. So but, they're going to release it with the Cavs jersey. But and then change it up? Yeah, and they're going to change it up. But the, the main screen menu, when you turn the game on, it's yeah. always going to have them in the Cavaliers jersey. Yeah, but see, that's stupid because the game comes with the updated roster. <laughs> yeah, so, so he'll be on the Celtics already, but the cover and the main menu, yeah. like, that's corny. Well, I mean, I could, because, I mean, the paper it's is easy to change. It's effective for them to do. Yeah, to, but to redo the, the, the whole the disc. programming. Yeah, that's, that's a but lot But it's not even what reprogramming. It's the, it's the, the main menu. Yeah, but and even, the, the you know, those things on, take a lot of time. On the, on the, the contrast. Yeah, it's a lot. Everything is boxed up, ready to be shipped out. You open up all the boxes and... Like, you and really have to do all of those discs over to, for them to change something like that. Deal, and the cover just, of the discs, too. Like, so what? 2K yeah. just got an NBA deal. They got the E-League coming out with the NBA. <laughs> they, yeah, listen, they, they have the money, but exactly. I, don't, I don't think it's a, a priority for them. Well, yeah, for them. To, they probably just don't care at this point. If they, if they, if they, I mean, they do have not two do Shaq it. versions, the one with him on the Lakers and the one with him on the on the Heat or whatever. So those... Uh, <laughs> you just get the Shaq version. You just got to get the... I mean, I'm going to yeah, get we, the Legends edition. We, yeah, because we need a, a Shaq. <laughs> Miami Heat edition. We really need that. I mean, well, the, there's the, La- the Lakers Shack is going for 140 or 150, yes. and then the um, the Heat Shack is going for 100. But it's not just about the cover. You also get the VC and a whole bunch of other stuff included. You know, the uh, those my copies are going nowhere. Right, <laughs> <well, laughs> those copies are going nowhere. Right. <laughs> you can just play NBA Live. No, nah, nobody's doing nah, that. Nah, we good on that. <laughs> I seen the graphics on that. We good on that. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's, nobody's playing still loud. making. Like, yeah, yeah, they yeah, even yeah, bother? It's I, I they're know. using the technology that 2K used on Dreamcast. They still using that, so it's looking. It's looking. <laughs> I don't real even bad. think they even got that far. Yeah, yet. it's bad. Exactly. But while we on 2K, make sure you guys are stepping your 2K game up because we do have the real fans, real talk NBA 2K tournament that's going to be coming up later this year. So make sure as soon as you get your pre-orders in, you get them games, y'all be at home practicing because you know it's going to be a lot of money on the line plus a whole lot of other gifts from the sponsors and the friends of the show. So you might want to step your game up between now and October. Definitely no question about that. Make sure you're following us on social media, website realfansrealtalk.com, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. Click that like button. Our, our Twitter and Instagram at Real Fan Talk, and uh, of course you could also subscribe to our YouTube page and like us and follow us on social media directly from our website on the bottom, the bottom of the Real Fans Real Talk dot com website. Uh, ben Simmons is cleared to play, but Joel Embiid is still uh, not. So. <laughs> Well, I guess uh, you know Levar was right on that one <laughs> too. They got to be able to yeah, get on the dude's court, got to get healthy and play. I'm glad Ben Simmons is healthy. Though. I'm glad he's actually going to be able to play. I, I think that if he stays healthy, he'll probably be Rookie of the Year if he can, you know, do at least half the things that they say he can actually do. I think he'll be Rookie of the Year. But they got to stay healthy. That's the, the been the Seven Sixers' main problem is that you got all these young kids. that's nice, but none of them ever really play. I don't, when was the last time a Seventy Sixers rookie played more than seventy five games? Like, I don't even remember. Oh, that hasn't happened at all. <laughs> the last time, like, like, yeah. You're lucky to get half a season out there. Exactly. Doing, so. I don't know what, like, I wouldn't even want to get drafted to Philly anymore at this point. Like, you know you're going to get injured for the remainder of the season early. Yeah, but some of it is just them being cautious. I mean, Ben Simmons actually could have played most of the season last year, and they just shut him down yeah. from start to finish. Same thing, same thing with Embiid. Yeah, I, you know, I mean. The year, the year before last year. Yeah, that. I don't think Ben Simmons. I think Markel Fultz is still the best young dude on their team. Well, um, if he can stay healthy, hopefully. He Markel, can. well, he, Markel Fultz is the best young player on their team. That's man. the tradition, though, of, of, of the 76ers. So we got to wait and see if he can stay healthy. But like I said, Ben, ben was. the process. Yeah, Ben could have played last year. They just shut him down because they wanted to shut him down. He was only going to really miss like the first month and a half of the season. Mm-hmm. And they just decided to shut him down. Well, you know, but and B definitely has to get healthy. If not, then it just becomes an absolute joke that they've been yeah. drafting these talented guys that can't play and can't stay on the court. And he's definitely one of the top centers in the league if he can stay healthy, but he just cannot stay on the court. This is, you know, every year he's been out, so he's missed a considerable amount of time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there was also rumors that, uh, well, well, some fans saying that Danny Ainge, instead of trading for Kyrie Irving, should have traded for Jimmy Butler 
or Paul George. What do you think of that? Do you think Paul George or Jimmy Butler would have been better fits in Boston? I mean, they're, they're both defensive players, so I wouldn't mind having either one of them. But I mean, we at this point, you know, we way past that. He he blew that one. I think should have. Yeah, I, I did think he should have got one of them and then had them to play alongside Gordon Haywood, but. You know, they let that opportunity go. You think so. that's better than uh, Kyrie Irving, though? No. It, as far as the fit? No. And it's, it's, it depends it's, on who they drafted, though, too. If they had drafted Marco Fultz or Alonzo Ball, then maybe I, I'd, I feel that way, but it depends on how the team is. Yeah, they, they went Tatum. They felt he was the best guy, and yeah. that's why they traded down. But to say, oh, they should have got, they tried to get those guys. I mean, it we saw out. the Pacers traded Paul George for nothing. And so, they were actually, the Celtics were actually offering, yeah. the, the Pacers more than what they, you know, were offering the Cavs for yeah, Kyrie. So they, and they tried to get that. those guys, and they said no. I just think maybe, I mean, well, it's not really a rival because the Celtics, whether they got Paul George or not, I mean, yeah. both Eastern Conference, you don't want to make the Celtics that much better. But at the same time, the Pacers, if they get rid of Paul George, they're, you know, they're looking to tank as well. So Yeah, of course. Yeah, they, they Pacers, they just did that out of spite, and they sent them to Oklahoma City. But that was, no. that's the thing. Like, if, that's you know, what I if, think too, if like you are you trying to rebuild them, why not trade to the Celtics and get those draft picks that they were offering? Because they didn't want them to be a part of a winning team. They figured send them to Oklahoma City, and it's much tougher in the West to win. Whereas, yeah, had so he yeah, gone to, yeah, to Boston with the team they already had, they have a legitimate shot to he win. He might really resign with them. And yeah, well and but bottom line, Boston tried to get those guys. I mean, and yeah. at the time when they tried to trade for him, no one knew Kyrie was available. We just found out about Kyrie being available a month ago. Yeah, exactly. We didn't know that during the draft. And speaking of Paul George, uh, Magic was uh, accused of uh, tampering with uh, Paul George. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Watch the wording on that. That was a little <laughs> iffy right there. <laughs> with, you the, with the deal, with the, with the poor yeah, yeah, you deal. can't just say that like that. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I don't know about that, about that. But I, don't, I don't think you know that was the case. We're talking about Magic Johnson, uh, by the way. If you guys don't know, general manager of the uh, Los Angeles president, Lakers. president of basketball. I'm not sure if we have another Magic in sports. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but just in case, you know, some people might not know Magic like that. But they did accuse him of tampering. I don't think he he did it, and I think this whole thing will be thrown out eventually. But you know. They got they got to have something to talk about. So I guess yeah, it's, it's magic. Bogus. It's all bogus. In the place. I mean, yeah, I mean, at this point, it's not even like he went to the Lakers. <laughs> so it's bogus because if that's the case, then why aren't the Warriors being uh, looked into for tampering? They openly talked about recruiting Kevin Durant yeah. before he was a free agent. Yeah. So that's tampering, right? If if guys are texting you while you're still signed to another team, that's yeah, tampering. Technically. So uh, it's just a, it's just the storyline. That's all it is. Well, definitely nonsense over there. Um. But we got uh before we get into football, we want to advise you guys. We got the Real Fans Real Talk Fantasy Football League uh, coming soon. Make sure you're uh, following us and liking us on social media for more information on that. And we got a fan mail question. Uh, Tracy from Hartford writes in, "Who do you guys have ranked as the number one overall fantasy football draft pick?" Um, I mean, hmm. I would probably say Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, that's my pick too. Um, I may have said Ezekiel Elliott if he wasn't suspended for the first six games, uh, at least nah, for I mean, right now. Even even, even but, though Zeke will probably get more yards, Le'Veon Bell, you have a PPR league. He gets a lot of receptions. Yeah, he gets those receiving and rushing yards. So you and a lot of times he gets over a hundred on both. So you're getting the hundred, the, the bonus for a hundred on each one. Yeah. So. Hopefully, I get the first overall pick, so I can, you know, have <laughs> yeah, that Le decision to yeah, make. Yeah, Le'Veon is the guy. That's David it. Johnson, though, from, from Arizona is pretty good, too. Yeah, he, 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 he's I a dual he's, back. I think he's ranked one on, uh, I don't know if it's ESPN or one of those has him ranked as, as number one. So. And if they're both off the board, I think I'm going to go with either Antonio Brown or Odell Beckham Jr. after that. After depending, yeah, depending games. on who's on the board, yeah. yeah. Odell might be missing the f first game of the season, getting an injury in a preseason game. It looked like a little bit of a dirty hit going for the ankle, blindsiding him. Uh, you know, some people are against. I mean, I'm I'm all for, I always say with these defenseless receiver penalties that some of them are, are bogus because you can't really control whether it's a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision yeah. when you're running. But in this case, he clearly went for his ankle as he was coming down. So I, I think that it was a dirty hit. But, you know, it's only a sprain. It's not, you know, a fracture or anything. He'll be out possibly 
week one, but at the same time, Ezekiel Elliott will probably be out for game one on the cowgirl side. So what do you think is a bigger hit, Zeke or or Odell for losing week one? I'm going to say Zeke just because the Giants brought over Brandon Marshall. And so I think um, he'll be able to pick up the slack. And then uh, the, the tight end that they drafted as well, I think they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I think for the, the, the Cowgirls losing Ezekiel Elliott, you know, there's a huge difference between him and the next running back, even though they do have that offensive line, but yeah, there's but still a, that, a that's bigger why, drop. That's why I don't, didn't really necessarily agree with Zeke getting rookie of the year because that offensive line is so good. And even, like, their backup running backs, even yeah. if they're not that talented – when you have a wide open hole like they leave, I could run the ball <laughs> and yeah. get positive yards. Yeah, I think I mean I think it was just the way he dominated throughout the year. Yeah. yeah. Like he was very dominant as a rookie, which is you know, I mean, he was physically imposing on grown men. Where they were guys yeah. where you could see late in the game that didn't want to even tackle him. So that's why he got it. But um as far as the question, it is Zeke, but I think it's closer than we think, because I don't really trust the Giants O line or running game. Yeah. And everything that Odell can do is what's going to open up Brandon Marshall. Yeah, exactly. You know, without all the other options are j- just going to yeah. look like superstars. If exactly. he's there, yeah. if he's not With... there, then the attention goes on Marshall, exactly. and then you know that yeah. kind of cuts things down. So. Yeah, I mean they they've had the little ticky tack. Plus, Shepard in. Inver- I was about to say, well. yeah, yeah. Shepard has a little ticky tack injury. Odell's out. Um, Brandon Marshall left the game the other night with the shoulder injury. So, without Odell being able to stretch the defense yeah. and command double teams. Those other guys, they got to be able to beat their defender and get open because they really can't run the ball, and Eli's not going to have much time to throw the ball. And Marshall might be unless, unless Flowers uh, actually can, can block. Uh, we all know Eric Flowers is not. <laughs> this is well, he, he can block, but the problem is he, he gets a lot of penalties. He gets, yeah. he gets the is, full Is that blocking or wrestling? And, <laughs> yeah. Full He's stars, holdings, holding. Yeah. And, you know, so he, they said they said he, he he got his act together this uh, season. So I I, I want to wait and see because you know he, he was a first to. round pick yeah. a few years yeah, this back, is... and you know I, I had a lot. Of, I was like, they need a lineman. They pick him, and you know, sure, and he's he's not disciplined. So hopefully this year, you know, he doesn't cause it's, us a, a lot of yeah. crucial game uh, penalties. It's a big year from this is year three. Yeah. So this is a, a crucial year for him. Well, he, you know, if he can get everything together, get a better understanding of the game, you know, and actually get out on the field and, and do Because he has a lot of talent. It's just that he's getting a penalty after a lot of those plays, and it, it costs the Giants. So if he can get out of that and get out of his own way, I think he'll be fine, and I think the Giants will be good this season. Oh, definitely. No question about that. Just the receiving core this yeah. year. But they need the help on the line. They do. Yeah, I mean, they do, but, I mean, Eli Manning managed to throw for a decent amount of yards last season. And, yeah. you know, with Odell Beckham out there, you add Brandon Marshall and this new rookie tight end who has good speed. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's looking like a force to be reckoned with, no question about that. But um, moving along, uh, speaking of football, um, uh, Colin Kaepernick had his, uh, pro, you know, protesters uh, in, at, at NFL headquarters. And LaShawn McCoy says, kind of along the lines of what me and Eric have been saying since day one, that, you know, he, he just doesn't have the talent. There's some players out there who have the talent where it's worth the distraction, but in his case, he's, he's just not that good. So, I mean, he's a backup quarterback at best. So, you know, teams, it's not like he's technically blacklisted, but he also has high expectations for his salary, which he... He doesn't necessarily deserve. And then you also have, you know, there was talks about him going to Baltimore and then he goes he goes out and, and, and insults Ray Lewis and, and the owner with the yeah. Django pick, you know, implying that, you know, Ray Lewis is a slave loving his master. And that's, you know, so, I mean, he, he goes out there and he burns that bridge with the Ravens. So, I mean, there's a lot more to it than, you know, him being blacklisted, so. Well, I don't think the Ravens were going to pick him up even before that happened. So I can't even say that. After, you know, they were talking about the only one to poll the fans and all that. So I don't know if they were going to even sign him anyway after he. Well, whether he, he they were or well, there, there was interest. Exactly there was interest. Uh, yeah. Coach Harbaugh had, had openly said they were interested in bringing him in and speaking with him. Um, yeah, that was the coach, but not the owner. Well, but again, there was interest there. So, you know, that's almost like going on a job interview and then going on your Facebook or IG or Twitter later on and this in the company that you just interviewed for, like, obviously they're not going to hire you at that point. No. You know, um, but Statman and I have been in agreement about this. He is not a starting quarterback in the league. 
he doesn't possess Other that talent. The Browns or the yeah, Jets, I mean, maybe. aside from yeah, well. the Browns, uh, the Jets, the Jaguars, and San Fran, who he chose to leave when he had fourteen million dollars on the table. Yeah. I mean, there aren't very many options for him, and it's too late. It's already too yeah, late in the not game. Not like San yeah. Fran cut him or anything. He, he chose to he leave. He opted so, out, and that's fourteen million dollars. Yeah, he had the option to resign. Yeah, he, he thought he was worth more than fourteen not million dollars. Not only he opted out, he restructured his deal because he really had two yeah. years on his deal. He restructured it to give him the opportunity to opt out. Yeah. So he really would have been under contract with the Niners this year and next year. He restructured it so he could opt out. I can't feel sorry for you. You left fourteen million dollars on the table. Yeah. Yeah, well, if he gets signed, I don't know. At this point, I can't. Even, I can't recall it. But I know they're talking about more protests, so we'll keep you guys up to date on what's going on. We posted some footage on the Real Fans Real Talk Instagram page from the protest uh, that went down yesterday, so you guys can check that out. Make sure you follow on us on all of our social media. The website is realfansrealtalk.com, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk, Twitter, and uh, Instagram is at realfantalk. And, of course, make sure you guys subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. You can see all the interviews. All the blogs are on the website, so make sure you guys hit us up on all of our social media. All right, and the, the protests were nonviolent, but the Yankees game wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's a fact. That's a fact, that man. The, the Yankees game out of control uh, today. Uh, M Miguel Cabrera, I don't know, he had some words with uh, Austin Romaine at the plate, and he pushed him, and next thing you know, Romaine tackled him, and then it was just a, a, a all-out brawl that broke out at the game earlier today. I was proud of the Yankees, though. You know, they mm -hmm. represented for New York very well. I seen after uh, Romaine hit him with the spear, he, you know, he threw a couple of shots on the way down, so I was glad they was representing for New York, you know, and that way you can't just be letting teams push you all around like that. So I'm, I'm very happy about that one. Yeah, they the did lose the game, though, <coughs> so I was upset about that. Justin Verlander put out a tweet after afterwards, uh, which summarized it, and he, he put the, the tweet of Ron Burgundy uh, with the video saying, well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so at least they're laughing it up now, but uh, it was, uh, you know, definitely uh, fans do like fights breaking out in sports, yeah. you know, so it was... Uh, every every once in a while, it's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a, a lot of people go to hockey just for the fight. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, when you see it in baseball, you know, the, the fans aren't going to mind, definitely. But the Yankees did lose the game, so that's the, that's the bad part about the situation. But uh, speaking of fighting, we got the big uh, big payday fight for McGregor Mayweather. It's mm -hmm. finally here this Saturday. All the, you know, nonsense back and forth talking, and it's kind of... Uh, a little bit ridiculous because they're not, you know, I mean, I don't think it's going to be really much of a fight. McGregor sure is looking confident that he could beat Mayweather, but... Well, he always uh, looks confident. Uh, I mean, you're supposed to do that, I yeah. guess, but I don't know whether he even really believes in his mind that he could, he could outbox one of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound boxers of all time. So, I'm not sure what to expect. You know, Mayweather said he's going to go after... McGregor to try to get a knockout. If he does that, then he might get knocked out himself. But I, I, if he does what he's been doing, which got him to 49-0 and and one of the best, if not the best, defensive boxers in the history of time, then you know he's going to make McGregor look worse than he's made other fighters that he's fought over the past you know, 20 years or I so. I think it's going to look worse than when he fought Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. He just picked Canelo Alvarez apart. And I do feel like he can knock him out later in the, in the fight. But, I mean, as far as McGregor goes, you know, he got he got the number that he, he wanted, even though technically he doesn't get that entire check because a couple people got to get paid before him. Absolutely. But he got, either way, it's still going to be the biggest check he's ever gotten, probably times five. So, you know, he's happy either way. He's going to sell the fight and continue to sell the fight because the more pay-per-view buys, and they're going to get a lot. You know, it doesn't matter. People think this is, you know, some nonsense. They're still going to sell a lot of pay-per-views, and at $100 a pop, they're going to make a lot of money off of this fight. So McGregor well, is going the, to sell it the, to the, the last the, at, at the MGM haven't even sold out. 
I mean, cause yeah, they the, still had. Yeah. I think as of yesterday, still was like seven thousand. I mean, people are going to pay yeah. the hundred because that's what I'm saying for the pay per view. For the pay per view, so they're going to make a lot of money on that end. Uh, the, the the seats are, are are a little bit overpriced, and people aren't going to pay that much to see a fight, even though it's yeah. a spectacle. They're not going to pay that much money to see a fight that they know, you know, or at least you know a lot of people, boxing fans, yeah. know that it's not going to be yeah. much of much of a fight. So. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, Floyd is gonna handle him. Um, I expect Floyd to actually be aggressive early in the fight. I mean, we've seen it with other big punches. When he fought Canelo, he attacked Canelo early yeah. and and made Canelo very uncomfortable. He'll fill him out. I, I, yeah. felt, I felt, if I remember correctly, the first two rounds. You know, he kind of. I think Canelo won the first two rounds just because. Nah. Go nah. back and go back yeah, and look May, at them. Mayweather, 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 Mayweather usually <laughs> hangs back the first two rounds to see what somebody. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's how bad it was in the fight. He did not. That's traditionally, <laughs> what he does. You go back. You look yeah, at it. Yeah, he actually was, was aggressive early in the fight against Canelo, and he couldn't touch him. And then yeah, do anything. And I expect him to do the same thing because honestly, not to not to disrespect Conor's power. We know he's a powerful puncher, but if Floyd lays back and takes it very easy, Conor's going to build confidence in every round, thinking I'm hanging with this guy. If you're Floyd, what you want to do is embarrass him early yeah. Yeah. And, and, and force the, the fight to be fast-paced for him because he's not going to be able to make those decisions on the fly the same way Floyd can. Yeah. So you, you push the tempo a little bit, you force him into something, and then in the second half of the fight, then you lay back because then at that point, Conor's going to be wild and aggressive. Thinking, oh, I can, you know, well, I can beat, keep up. Uh, Paulie Malignaggi. You know? Well, I mean, <laughs> Paulie Malignaggi <laughs> is. I'm disappointed in Paulie because Paulie's looking like a real clown out here. Listen, I this that's the fight I want to see now. After you that's know, the next is, one. After this, this is going to be, and, you know, I mean, easy. McGregor did that because Paulie was talking trash like six months ago or something. But he he, he completely used Paulie. Yeah, I don't even he think the video is accurate. No. I think they. I think they both probably well, that had their said, moments. Paul said yeah. that, 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 I know the, the video doesn't show everything. I'm sure happened. it shows. Probably he probably got a little couple of combos. Yeah. That's why he left and the then, camp, and he's like, "I'm not but sparring he, with you anymore." Yeah, or whatever. He, he used Paulie because he knows Paulie's going to be part of the um, the, uh, the 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 uh, yeah uh, announce team. Uh, you know, analyzing the fight, and so he brought Paulie in, and he used Paulie. Yeah. And so, you know, they, they disrespected him. Yeah, disrespecting, you know, releasing a photo of him with his hands behind his back. We know you didn't fight Paulie with your hands exactly. behind your back. Like, come on, you know. And if you, if you look at the clip, the so called knockdown, it was a 20 second clip from different angles. So, of course, that wasn't all one yeah, round. Exactly. Showed Those were show. different bits. Like, it wasn't even enough to fill the Instagram yeah. clip. Like, it was 20 seconds. Exactly. Like, like come on. Knock it you off. know, yeah. I'm sure if you were knocking out Paulie in sparring, you wouldn't have called him back for another sparring session. Exactly. If, it, if it was that easy. The, you, you're using a guy in sparring to help you with the fight, not yeah. to beat up on. And you're talking trash afterwards that you yeah, dominated. Yeah, yeah. Whole, like, and then you know, when he approached him at the last press conference, you know, he was like, oh, you, you know, you got beat. So, you know. I mean, last time I checked, Adrian Broner dominated poorly. That is, we're not talking yeah. about Adrian Broner having a shot to beat Floyd, right? Exactly. So. So we, I do want to see that fight. I do want to see, and I think that you know, if this is a quick fight, they're gonna we're gonna see Paulie versus Connor because then they could sell it as you know, well he's Paulie's no nowhere near Mayweather, so maybe well, he might there's, actually there's be no, a little bit. I, I, more I'm pretty competitive. sure that's what uh, that's why McGregor did it to, to get another just to get payday another little payday yeah. after the Mayweather because he'll still he'll still get fifteen twenty million to, to fight for Paulie just because you know they're gonna sell those papers. just off the back and forth yeah exactly you think it's going the distance or he's stopping them <laughs> I think it's going the distance but I think he's I think uh, McGregor is gonna look bad every single round like he's gonna get embarrassed yeah. I don't think. Mayweather's capable of knocking out McGregor because McGregor can not take a punch. I know you, you, you talked about how uh, in one of the fights he was on the Bambi legs. Um, but at the same time, McGregor, you know, Mayweather hasn't knocked somebody out in ages. And this is a guy yeah. who can take a punch. He I can't take Floyd, a punch, but Floyd when you continuously out. are hitting yeah, someone, yeah. it's not about that one. Yeah, it's yeah. when the hand speed of Floyd. Like Once again, every, every person that steps in the ring with Floyd Mayweather comes out saying the same thing. He's a lot faster. He's a lot stronger. So when he's catching you with multiple combinations, it's possible, you know, you get into that fifth, sixth round. He can yeah, keep, absolutely. you know, you're, and you're and tired, that's what I think, you're not used to that. That's what I think is going to happen. Floyd does not possess the one-punch power. Even yeah. in his pretty boy Floyd days, yeah. he wasn't knocking guys out with one it punch. Like, yeah, it was just the flurry of punches and, that, you know, with swelling up your eyes, yeah. and before you know it, you're going down. And you're wasting so much energy yeah. because you're not hitting him. He's just bobbing him yeah. in or you hitting the shoulder or whatever. He's, I, so, I think he stops him, like, in the eighth or ninth round. I think he puts enough punishment on him throughout the fight. That he just, you know. And then by that point, yeah, he's going to he's, he's gonna drop. Shane Mosley 
recently was on TV and he said it. He said Floyd hits a lot harder than people realize. That's why fighters stop coming forward. Yeah. You know, yeah, we only see Floyd throw the right hand out every now and then. But if he's hitting you with it, it every it clean in the back every of your, time. Yeah, in the back yeah. of your mind is like I'm not gonna keep going forward. This dude is landing yeah. too clean. Yeah. And those are the way you know in, in uh, knockout kings and all the boxing games you, you miss and all that energy that you yeah. e exhort once you miss on that big punch and Mayweather comes back catch you a couple of times and he's gonna kill McGregor's body yeah. he's gonna kill his body yeah. so it's, I think it's he knocks him out ninth I'm round not, I'm, I'm not saying this is hundred percent gonna happen but he definitely can knock him out but who's watching the fight though. Everybody's going to watch it. I'm just right. saying. Every, oh, you saying, where you going? Oh, oh, Cliff, come on, man. You trying to get party locations on the air? Come on. <laughs> get out of here, my, man. My place has limited seating, but I'll be having a fight. <laughs> Cliff, you're welcome to go there. Um, you know, you got to have chip downs, though. I might do the free 99 joint, but I'm, I'm probably not going to risk I remember that. last week, Lady Bucks on the room, she said they're cutting them down. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's It might thing. be hard. It might be harder to get the free. I don't want to try to get the stream, <laughs> and then the, 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 then it goes bad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Whether knocks him out and well, then happens, you know, miss the knockout and everything, it's not worth it. Cliff, you're gonna have to put half of that half so of that five hundred dollars. Chip down twenty ahead, and <laughs> oh. you know that, that that's worth it. I think so. But look, look who's in the look who's in the building. Kaboom! Guess who stepped in the me, room? Me, that gang. Yeah. They, <laughs> you know what it was? I think the fans was probably online. You know, that right now that petition was yeah. going around. That petition was exactly. going around because you know they had to they had to the, the bring Rainer back for, on power, and now they got to bring Ladybug back <laughs> to like to real fans, real talk. I think I'm gonna be Yo. Um, appealing some of these. <laughs> You need, nah, you we need, need to shout out the fans. First, though. We made the yeah. plea before you appeal anything. Mike, yeah, no mic up, but we had the plea last week. The free lady blood, <laughs> ladybug petition going around. I'm glad to see everybody been signing up for that. Hashtag free ladybug. Ladybug yeah. is back. You guys like to put me on. It's, it's been, been trending. Not me, baby. Yeah, that was wasn't me. I'm just saying. I'm yeah. not liking the memos. The memos has changed. I haven't been getting the same memos. It's okay. <laughs> we well, were talking about getting some shirts made up in your honor, but you here, so yeah, everything's good. Exactly. We good. We rolling now. Everything's good. You know, I got I got good lawyers. You know, thanks. Oh to you. man! You know, shout out. I'm just <laughs> oh saying. man! I ain't doing what Tasha doing though. It's all right. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I had to step on the scene. What's going on, Especially guys? Especially Mayweather and McGregor talk. We gotta and get to that. You know, you know, you know, you know. I was on it. I was creeping. I was looking at everything going on, and you know, it, since it's Saturday. Tensions are high. Everybody got their bets going. That smack talking is getting serious now. So on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, any type of social media outlet you have, you're hearing about this fight is trending. It's tweeting. It's number one. So as always, you know, social media, certain people like to leak out and talk about what's going on and, and their opinions. And some opinions are stronger than others. So, number one, we're going to go into Oscar De La Hoya. Now, when we always go into matches and fights, his name always comes up. But in his opinion, he feels like McGregor's not going to even touch Mayweather. Yeah, he's I mean, pretty a accurate. Lot, a lot of the, yeah, a lot yeah. of the you think he won't land not one punch? No, he's going to land a punch. They're saying he's well, not even going to. Max gonna... Kellerman said the same thing. Yeah. No, he's going to land a punch. But, I mean, I, I Floyd's going to carry him from, for yeah. the early part of the fight, so he'll land a punch. He won't land anything well, hard. Yeah. He was, he's going to be getting a lot of the Mayweather shoulder, though. Yeah, it'll be a lot of shoulder. He might get one, like, off the top of the head or something, but he won't land, like, yeah. anything clean. Yeah. So. I, you know, people are going, and the... Society's just going crazy with it. Long story short, you have to get it Saturday. I don't know how you get it. You know, I'll probably go to Statman's house because I'm a creep. I don't care. I, <laughs> I kick people out of seats. That's probably why I get suspended, but it's okay. It's all right. Statman forgives me. It's all right. You could stand on the table. No, I'm not. See, that's how you Damn, see how they set never, me up for suspension? Never, oh, man. They set me up for suspension like that. That's not fair. And then when I do get on the table, like, but they told me to. No, Ladybug, write up. And I get a write up. In my memo. See? That set me up. Y'all wrong. Now I get it. See, it's live on air. Guys are wrong. Anyway, you know, they were talking about this whole Paul Melanagi going after McGregor also, telling him, like, listen, I'm chilling. Once you get smacked by Mayweather, I don't care about getting sloppy seconds. I want in next. So now it's like he's telling him, 
He's not going to win. And he's like, listen, at the Mayweather sweep you, I make sure you don't even want to step in this ring ever again. Now, how do you guys feel about all those Basically, strong uh, opinionated uh, statements? Is, it's official then. That's, that's what's going down. It's definitely, that's the, that's the, the, the that's, accurate That's rumors. what's going on in social media. It's actually going to happen Malinaji versus McGregor next. Right, he's saying he don't care. He don't care if he wins or lose. He wants PC. He wants a piece. So... I love it. I, I want. Yeah, I, I want to see I, it. I, I, I mean, that's I, actually I, a better I, fight I for McGregor. Yeah. I mean, of course, McGregor is going to want to actually redeem himself. But if he loses to Malinaji too, that's it. It's over. That's, 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 there's that's no more. They that's the thing. The drive sport the of box, in that coffin. The sport yeah. of boxing em embarrasses the UFC because you know. Yeah. But then if he redeems himself against Malinaji. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, all right, well, the door he can't beat the best, but he's still okay. He can, hang he can beat the bottom yeah, at yeah. the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> fight I mean, he's not bottom of the barrel. That's disrespectful, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. though. He's, he's That's mad disrespectful. Fighter, right? Right. 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 At this point in his career, when was the last time Malin Azzi won? Uh, well, he was been, like semi retired. Yeah, he was. He That's what I'm saying. I mean, he's, a, he's a two division he's, champ. He's been he's yeah, a but, respectable fighter. But we're talking about right now in his career. He's he's not ranked in the top 50 right now. Yeah, but there's not too many guys who could take a layoff and still be ranked top. I mean, Floyd is one of the exceptions. But he wasn't even... Where was he ranked before he, was, he, he well, retired, though? I mean, he... Every fight that he's had over the last five, six years has been against quality opponents. You're I talking mean, Sean Porter. Losses you're talking lost, Danny Garcia. I mean, consecutive fights has he lost? He lost by like four in a row. <laughs> All right, but, but those were world champions, though. He's not he fighting tomato cans. Yeah, that's, 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 that's why. That's why he's so he's so far away. He lost his last four fights. Now we're talking about a two year layoff, and he wasn't good at that point. Like, well, Paulie's problem is he just doesn't. Ha he doesn't like have him. any type of power. So yeah. guys just walk him down. Like Broner just walked him down. Danny Garcia, they just walk him down because it. There's nothing on those punches. That's so right, I don't even. I wouldn't even want to see him in McGregor. It's, to be a, it's, a, it's a little, a little more even. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see him in McGregor. Well, you know, I'm going to see it on Saturday. Everybody's going to see it on Saturday. I'll probably be all over social media, on my live, on my Instagram, on my Snapchat, letting you guys know what's going on. I mean, you know, I ain't going to leak the fight, but, you know, you're going to get my commentary. I ain't going to show the TV. I don't like y'all that much. I'm joking. Anyway, we're going to go into this Kaepernick, you know, this whole thing with his rallies and, and his protests. And a lot of people are giving strong opinions on that, too. Not only about him as a player, just him as a person and what he represents and his morals and values and how they are really inspired and influenced by what he does. So uh, first and foremost, Reverend J.C. Jackson, you know, I love him. I love when he goes out and he really speaks. And he's been doing this for years. So this is not just he's coming out. He's definitely letting the NFL know that it's it's time to sign them. It's time to stop, you know, being hypocritical in these players and, you know, picking out certain things he can't do and, and others can and making it so difficult for this guy just to play a sport that he loves. And not only he loves, but Jesse Jackson feels like he's a good player. Like you're taking away from him as a player, somebody that loves the sport, that's taking a passion, but not only taking his passion, but taking his influence as a celebrity and trying to do something positive. He just feels like the NFL is giving players with criminal records more praise than Kaepernick at this point. So they're just telling the NFL to get off the high horse and, you know, give this man a job. So what, one it's thing like Roger I, Goodell I, could make that decision. Yeah, the team either. has to make that decision. That's, right? the, that's the thing. So. It's, go, it's basically what the owners want to do. It'd be great if, if, you know, Goodell could just be like, yeah, somebody's got to give him a job. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the owners. But what I will say is I am happy that, you know, what he did as far as outside of football is, is you know, it's kind of bringing people together because, I mean, all of this, whatever you feel like he's not good enough to play or however you feel about Kaepernick, you know, at the end of the day, like, let's not lose sight of the reason that he was actually protesting in the first place. Mm -hmm. So whether or not he plays another down in football, I am happy that, you know, it, it, it's making, you know, a lot of people are becoming more unified. I'm happy for the people that stepped up, you know, and, and, and took a knee with him or, you know, whatever they did, however they protested. Uh, I mean, and especially now with, like, the stars are starting to step up a little bit more. We had Derek Carr quarterback for the you know for the Raiders he stepped up you know so a lot of including the, the white athletes are starting to step up now as well so I think from that standpoint at least you know what he what he did is actually you know helping definitely and um just going more into the rally and other public figures speaking out uh Curtis Blow was actually at one of the rallies in New York and he was just explaining how he feels that this whole NFL not signing Kaepernick is 
a bigger reason. Basically, they're making an example out of him to silence other players about off the field issues. And basically it's saying, listen, you want to speak up, you want to be an individual, you want to do what you got to do. Look what happened to this guy. And, you know, he feels like, like I said, this is completely his opinion and, you know, don't kill the messenger. But it's one of those things where he feels like it's a big conspiracy within the NFL and the franchise and how, you know, it's it's a off it's off the field issues that really makes a player also. Yeah, you're good on the field. Yeah, you can score all the touchdowns, the field goals. You can do great for your team, leave your team to victory. But who are you outside this field? Are, are, are you even human? He's basically saying that, you know, it's a big conspiracy within the NFL and, you know, they're making Kaepernick basically the the doll, like the you know the play not by a play. Conspiracy, like you know, and like I said, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Like I said, this is very strong opinions made by public figures, and this is things that people in turn, you know, they take and they don't know how to take it, how to uh, interpret it themselves. Everyone has their own opinions, as well as everyone has their own morals and values. So when they hear something like this, you know, you can say, oh, it's it, it's not really a conspiracy. I, I agree. Too. Well, I don't feel like it's a whole conspiracy. It's, it's not a conspiracy. It's, it's but, business. That's yeah. what it is. It's yeah. a business. I mean, for, for, and each individual owner, it's their business, and they have the right to, to not sign Colin yeah. Kaepernick if they don't want to deal, you know, with that. And, you know, so... It, as for, you know, yeah. to go as far as saying it's a conspiracy, I'm I'm, I'm not with and that. And the same, no, he's not begging for for a team either. He's trying to do his cause. Like if you look at the other side, you know, shoe on the other foot, Kaepernick's not running to teams saying, "Please take me, please take me." It's like, yeah. listen, if you don't got to take me, I'm still standing for what I stand for. I played the game. Y'all seen what I did. You seen how you know. You seen how I delivered what I produced. Now I know what my mind and my heart is. So at this, and he point, just raised another million um, for various charities so. exactly so he's not breaking down any nfl doors he's not asking to be on a team he's not asking for a job back he's doing what he has to do for his peace of mind so he can go to sleep peacefully safe and sound so for like you know like you said for it to be a conspiracy no because it's not that deep but in the same note if he's gonna go and be you know happy in what he does then why judge him He's doing what he loves it's, on and off the field. It's sick. definitely not a conspiracy. All 32 teams do not want Colin Kaepernick. Um, it's not like we're talking about Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. So he's a guy who, even if you take this whole activism out of it, he was still going to have a tough time finding a team. If Cam Newton did it, he would have, Cam Newton would have a job. Yeah, right? that's a fact. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I mean. That's, 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 that's the reality of it. We can't, that's can't, the reality. Can't, can't, can't but can't no, but it, it, like he's yeah, the but talent, you know, when the talent is yeah. there, it doesn't matter. He'd have a and job. as far that's as Jesse thing. Jackson, I get his point, but to me, that's a perfect example of just jumping on a headline, right? Ladybug, you may not know this. You guys know this though. Lucky Whitehead got cut from the Cowboys a couple weeks ago. You just aged me, but it's okay. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, because it was it was a, it was a low end headline. It, it wasn't a major thing. No yeah. big deal was made of it. But Lucky Whitehead was cut for the Cowboys, right, for mistaken identity on an assault. No one spoke up on his behalf. No one said why are the Cowboys cutting him. They didn't give him a chance to speak his piece, right? But because Colin Kaeper Kaepernick is a headline, it's easy to attach your name to that and say, oh, this is terrible. This is horrible. What the NFL is doing to him. Well, what about Lucky Whitehead? His career could have been over yeah. if he didn't fight to clear his name of that assault. His career would have been over at that moment. This is a dude who's a special teams punt returner. He ain't a quarterback. Nobody yeah. was paying attention to him. Well, he he was gonna have to fight on because I don't want nobody. You know. All right, but then the same applies to, to Kaepernick. Kaepernick was already gonna be in trouble to find a team. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying from the standpoint of fighting for two different. He's fighting for his individual. You know, he was charged of, of a crime. Well, Kaepernick he was, was a suspect. For, he wasn't charged. Well, excuse me, he, he was, was a suspect. suspect. Yeah, but Kaepernick is fighting for something a lot larger. So I mean, we're not gonna sit up here and just go to battle for. But why for, wouldn't you? This is a guy who's being accused of a crime he didn't commit. He's a suspect. And loses his job, the Cowboys didn't even hear his piece. Well, I'm, that's the that's the Cowboys. So, but uh, we don't know about the situation. Nobody to to say if he had if he had, maybe if he had you know made it big in the press, somebody else would have known and they could have helped. Because he didn't have the name. Yeah, that's and, that's, and what, that's I'm what I'm he saying. He didn't have the he, name. So it's easy to, to for Jesse Jack, Jackson to attach his name to Kaepernick because the moment close. you do, it's a headline. If if they say Jesse Jackson is st standing next to Lucky Whitehead, you are gonna be like who? 
Exactly, but he's he he is, is involved in some. What they're saying is a criminal activity. So nobody's gonna attach their name to somebody that's doing they something wrong anyway. They rather attach it to activism. That's because that's a little bit different. But I get the you know <laughs> I get the but point. But it's you know they're a different. It's yeah. a agree to yeah. disagree Absolutely. situation. But definitely you know keep up with everything with the rallies. If you support what he does, definitely uh, look at it. If you don't support, and this is something I really want to stress, if you don't support or you don't understand. Please take the time to understand before you bash somebody and what they stand for. Regardless if it's a headline, regardless if it's somebody who's not as big. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what they're what they're pushing for and what their motives are, don't automatically think it's not important or it's not something that means something to them because you don't know what they're going through in their life. So, definitely just just a overall statement. If you don't know exactly what this cause is, what the rally's for, whatever the case may be, take your time and understand and then make your judgment. Even if it's something that's not positive, don't throw negativity out because you already got that going. So for me, that's the rumor mill. You already know. Keep up with me every week on RealFansRealTalk.com. All right. Uh, Marciano, getting back to the fight, Marciano Jr. said that this fight shouldn't count for the 50-0, and 0, which would break his... Dad's fifth. If, you if know, that's the case, then none of his father's fights should count since you know he had little interference, he had little help from some certain well, organizations that's, that's the outside of the yeah. boxing. No, and well, did, Marciano, so. I think he got a, I don't know the fighter's name, but he got a fight on his record that he beat like six times. He fought yeah. the same dude over and over. So at the same time, like, like, it's 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 like, it's it's like, like McGregor, like what if this was Mayweather's first fight? Like McGregor is a, yeah, a that's what I'm saying. So yeah. he's a capable He just doesn't want his father to lose the record. Yeah, yeah. Which again, it's a time, heavyweight it's a, record. It's a heavyweight so. record, so you know it's a lot harder to go forty nine and zero and have as a heavyweight when yeah. one punch you know could could take Most you time, out yeah. in the first round, yeah. as we see a lot of times with heavyweight bouts. So uh, the other thing is, since it, it, it is in Vegas, Vegas has uh, reports that ninety three percent of the uh, of the bets are actually on May. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, on McGregor. Because yeah. it's probably like That's a thousand one. Yeah, it's I, actually not. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I put a dollar on that too. I mean, you have, you know, some people are saying it's because it's the great white hope and it's it's McGregor. Nah, I don't know whether I. Mean, I That's agree how it was in the movie, though. It yeah, but, nah, but the <laughs> odds are so far <laughs> yeah. over on the other side. Yeah, it's just like you throw a little dollar on Mayweather, yeah. you'll get about like twenty three dollars. Yeah, or exactly. It's four to one now on McGregor. It was higher. It was five to one. I think it was even more than that before. But you put a hundred, you get four hundred for McGregor so and you if can you're manipulate watch the, the fight line. Yeah. and plus people there is the the people a lot of Mayweather haters so you kind of just want you know some people will probably <laughs> put a hundred bucks yeah. nah, no but you could manipulate the line though because you, you can have people who start to bet on small bets on McGregor to bring the odds a little closer so then that you go larger on Floyd. No, it really it goes by happen. the dollar amount. That's that's how the bookies move the line. No, that's they what I'm saying. They want the risk and all that. The more money that comes in on McGregor, the line gets closer. Yeah. So then if you really wanted to go large on Floyd, you put a couple hundred dollar bets on McGregor and it brings the line closer and then you go big on Floyd. No, yeah, it, it goes by dollar amount, not, not, not the right amount, not the over. number of bets specifically. That's what I'm saying. Dollar, you, the yeah, dollar exactly. Dollar that's what I'm saying. You put a lot of money there, and you get it back. Yeah, right. yeah, that that, that, that makes me believe that's that neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. I wouldn't know anything about that. I wouldn't. The fix is not going to be in because you know I kind of felt like you know what like what you said with Marciano that they might have it where. You know, yeah. the fix is in, but considering the public money is more on McGregor. But listen, yeah, guys, we're going to get into that yeah. all next week. We, we yeah, got to get up out of here. Crazy. So listen, for myself, Mark the Statman, Skevish, Ladybug, Eric Sanchez, Legend in Two Games, we will see you guys right back here next week. Good night, everyone. Peace. Peace. Facts. What up? What up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamonds, Trip Young, and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, Go yeah. check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. <laughs> Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, realtalk.com, I'm out, one. 
Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh, real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh,